Episode 14 of Bazooka Kickboxing Technical Series, and today we're talking about our switch kick, which is our switch lead kick. Um, I'm an orthodox fighter, so it's going to be my left kick from an orthodox position, and I'm going to use my lead side attack. And again, like all of the weapons we talk about, and I'm going to repeat it in everything in every episode of this series, it all starts from good footwork and good balance in our, in our framework and our structure. So I like to use lines on the floor as a visual. Um, for the video, I'm using a tape line, but all of these puzzle mats now all have lines in the floor, so it's easy to just use some of those lines on the floor. It's quicker and it's easier. So the key to a good switch left kick is starting with our feet in more of a uh, defensive position. The biggest mistake people make is when they throw their left kick, they start with a very long stance. So when you have a long stance, it's really hard to switch. It becomes very slow and it becomes very difficult to move your feet in a quick way. And the switch kick, you want to throw it as quick as possible because it's a lot of switching happening and it's easy to get countered with punches. So it's a quick switch left kick. So it starts from more of a defensive stance. In this kick, you don't really lengthen your stance as much because it's more of a kick where you want to make sure you stay high and keep your head away. But it's a very effective weapon because the, the left switch kick is the closest weapon to your target. So a lot of old school martial artists and kung fu, karate, they use a lot of their lead kick because it is the closest weapon to their target. So we're going to start with our footwork, staying in our defensive position. For those who haven't watched, you can follow the series from earlier on. There's a, I have an episode on defensive versus offensive footwork. So we're starting here with more of a defensive footwork. Again, I can block off of this, and a good left kick comes off a good block. So I'm here, 50-50. I have this tape line, and I'm going to keep this tape line between my feet this time. And this is going to make sure when I do a switch, I'm not switching my rear foot. And the line that is very important with that switch kick is this rear foot. And you want to make sure this rear line is straight. And I'm going to start off by saying one of the biggest mistakes people make is when they step to their left in this direction. So they'll bring their foot over and they land on the left of the line, which causes now a bent hip. If my target's over here, I don't want to be stepping this way because I end with that bent hip and it's going to take away power from my kick. So I'm going to make sure when I switch, my back foot stays on the right side of the line. This way I can kick through my target. Now if you watch my foot position, what's happening is my back foot is making a straight line. So I'm from my back foot comes up straight. I'm going to keep my heel on the line. As my front foot is going to do a half moon. So I'm half mooning my front foot and my back foot's coming up straight. So when you see it, you can see the direction, the way my kick is moving. Foot on the right side of the line. The other thing, key to a good kick, is this lead shoulder. When I throw this shoulder, I want to keep my left side in front of me. When I switch, I don't want my shoulder position to change. Because that quick moment when you're square, you're going to eat a lot of straight punches. So you want to make sure you stay heavy on your left side. I'm on my tape line, left side in front, I can switch and kick, and I stay defensive throughout. And as you notice, another thing people do which is, is a mistake is they constantly overthrow their kicks. So they'll throw their left kicks and spin around. You don't always want to spin your kicks around. It shows lack of control in your hips. So here, we're going to work it to be able to kick right back down, back foot exits. Seeing my hand position, I can keep my hands tight up top, or I can let my left hand go and make sure I block my head with my hand position. There you have it. We're going to start doing drills on the bag now where I can show you how to implement the power to it. So here's Troy Sheridan, just using tr your traditional long bag, your tie bag. And right here, he's just going to flow with some different combinations. Uh, kick to punch, punch to kick, and kick, punch, kick, all focusing on his switch left kick. I like the way Troy's using his jab to his left kick. 
And he also uses his right hand to his left kick, constantly changing how he sets up his left kick. So one of my favorite ways to develop any of my single power techniques, and it's with uh, stationary bags, and this is my favorite, uh, the wall bag, um, the pole bag, whatever you want to call it. And as you can see in our footwork is constantly using this um, with all our pivot points, which is one of my favorite bags. I've been using this bag for 13 years developing my kicks. So let's get to it, focusing on keeping that left side in front and getting as much power as I can shooting towards the wall. I can add singles or doubles as well. Can also change levels with my kicks. Adding hands. Here back with Troy Sheridan, I'm going to be holding the pads and he's going to be throwing his left kick on the pads, focusing on all those coaching tips that I just gave you. So let's start right away and then from there I'll talk about um, what Troy's doing. So right away you see him in a defensive stance. One of the, the easiest ways to make sure he's in control of his stance, he can block and bring his foot down. So now we know he's in a good defensive stance where he can block. From here he's going to find his distance and mix. You can see his heel line coming nice and straight, good power. Another good tip for power, if you watch Troy's foot line, not only is his rear foot staying on the line, he's slightly going out to his right. This way he can put more weight and more power. His ultimate goal is to push me back this way. And if you look at his kick, it's coming more circular, which is very important. A lot of people left, uh, throw their left kick more up which you're not going to get a lot of rotational power. So Troy is stepping slightly outside, getting good power to try to force me back to the ring. Take some view from the other side so you can see his shoulder position staying really tight um, on his left side so he's not open to counter punches. Okay, watch the way Troy's kicking, putting his foot down, then exiting because it's very important to add the footwork before and the footwork after to keep good defense and good range. A few more. Double kick. Single, double, okay to make this drill a little bit more of an intermediate advanced drill and we're going to touch upon um, combination fighting in the next few episodes from here. But just for the left kick, we're going to talk about different ways to set it up and different ways to finish with it. And we're just going to flow with some of our favorite ways. We're going to do punch to left kick. We can do left kick to left knees. We can go kick, punch, kick, but all focusing on setting up the left switch kick. Together. Good. 
Okay, Troy and I are going to take it again to that intermediate advanced level and we're going to be partnering and countering back and forth. So we're just going to start basic, catching off the block and then we're going to add straight punch to kick. So we're going to exchange left kicks back and forth. Right cross. One, two. Kick, punch, kick. Hook kick. Let's go kick to knee. There you have it. So now we're going to discuss some of the common mistakes and it's going to start with the footwork and that's where most of the problems occur. And the first mistake that people make is they start from a stance that is way too long. If your stance is too long, it takes too long to switch. So you want to make sure you're in that defensive stance so you limit how much distance you're switching. The second mistake people are going to make is the, the line of that heel. So I want to make sure my front foot goes in line with my opponent, not stepping off this way. If I step off this way and try to kick this way, I end with that bent hip and we're leaking power from the hip. So make sure that heel line stays in line and you keep um, a nice um, linear, you don't want to be too square so it limits that which is the third mistake now. Don't square your shoulders up when you kick. Stay heavy on this left side. This way you can still defend yourself with punches. The last mistake I'm gonna talk about is that hip. So what's happening is when we're kicking, we're kicking with that bent hip. So one tip that I like to use when teaching it is focus on pushing your hip through a few times before you kick. So if you can see my load up before the kick, one. I want my hip direction to go this way. So I'll push one, two, and then when I kick, boom, I can push my hip. Remember the end goal is not to end this way, it's to end in a nice straight line. So make sure you keep your footwork, you keep your shoulder position, very nice and small target this way, you're not open to straight punches when throwing that left kick. There you have it, episode 14, the lead switch left kick. And a very important weapon when it comes to fighting because it is the weapon that's closest to your opponent. And it's a strike that's actually really technical. I, I feel it's more difficult than your right kick because of the switch. And it's usually the kick that takes a little bit more time to perfect, a little bit more time to practice. Um, a good suggestion, um, as I mentioned in the previous episode, episode 13, it's important to switch stances sometime and by going southpaw to throw your left kick um, teaches your hip to work, teaches you to use your calves, teaches you to use your bad side. So after you do a few from a southpaw, go back to your orthodox position, then throw your lead switch kick. Um, it usually gives you that little bit more of the confidence and it teaches you that motor pattern in order to get a better switch left kick. We're going to start next episode discussing more about building combinations. Some of my uh, favorites, um, as those who watched all my career and seen my fights, I'm a, a combination-based fighter, love throwing combinations. So next week is going to be the start of how to throw, uh, learning how to throw good style, bazooka style combinations.